Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. How are you doing? Hopefully doing well. So discontinuations are on the brain once again, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about five different fragrances that if I hear through the grapevine are being discontinued or there's a chance they're being discontinued, I'll just go ahead and freak out and buy myself another bottle. There have been times in the past, which I have learned from, where people say, hey, this is discontinued, and you know, you're not sure, but you see a little smoke there, you think to yourself, nah, they wouldn't discontinue that. That fragrance is awesome. So you don't buy yourself a backup bottle. And then guess what? It is discontinued and the price goes to the friggin' moon. I will never let that happen again. So that's what we're talking about. Let's jump into it. Five fragrances, if they get canned, I'm buying myself another one. Discontinuations are always a, a weird topic because brands are not usually gonna come out and say, yes, we discontinued this fragrance. They like to keep that kind of hush-hush. It's all very secretive, like most things in the fragrance world. People just don't wanna be straightforward and transparent. <laughs> it's like, that's a faux pas. If you're straightforward and transparent, it's looked down on in the fragrance world. If you're a little bit shifty with some skullduggery smoke and mirrors, then people go, <laughs> good job. You know how to do it. So yeah, the fragrance isn't selling that well. Fragrance brand, can you just say, hey, sorry guys, if you love this, go ahead and get one, maybe get multiple because it's going away. Like, is that too hard to do? Instead, they just go, ah, tell no one, just, just secretly take it off the shelves. Don't mention anything and then take it off the website, okay? Again, don't mention anything, just pretend it never existed. People will forget, they won't even know that it was a real thing. They'll think they imagined it. Just tell me, is it gone, okay? Is it gone permanently or are you taking it away? That's all you gotta do. Just a little press release or something. Just a little tiny one. Hey, we're not making this anymore. My bad, but no, that's too much. Whatever, uh, let's talk about these fragrances finally. First up, Lunarosa Black by Prada. I love this fragrance. Prada is getting a little bit discontinuation happy, it would appear. I mean, you go back two, three years and say, hey, uh, do you think Prada would discontinue Prada Loam Intense? And everyone would go, <laughs> no. That's probably one of their best-selling fragrances. Everybody loves it. Flash forward, ooh. Prada is not one of those brands that's all that shy about discontinuing things. Uh, Lunarosa Extreme is one of my favorites in the Lunarosa line, and that was the first Lunarosa that got canned. So it's happened before. Lunarosa Black smells amazing in cool weather, and it's actually really unique as far as fragrances on sale nowadays go. It does have similarities to some other discontinued scents though. Bulgari Black, this little rubber hockey puck bottled fragrance, and Van Cleef & Arpels Midnight in Paris. And this one's painful for me. Midnight in Paris, a real love of mine. The bottle is beautiful. This you used to be able to find about $20. The Eau de Toilette, that's what this bottle is. And it was around that price at FragranceNet right before it was discontinued. And Lunarosa Black gets me close-ish to this and this. So I would absolutely, with the quickness, scoop up another bottle of Lunarosa Black. I'll tell you guys, when the rumors started flying about Midnight in Paris that it was being discontinued, I did buy backups of that. Bulgari Black, I didn't. Kind of a screw up there on my part, but I still have this bottle, so good enough. Next fragrance on this list, Wanted by Night. Love this one, absolutely love it. Sometimes at discounters, you can find this around $30 for a 50 ml size bottle, and that is a killer deal. Great bang for your buck. Wonderful smelling sweetness with bits of spice and smoke. Wanted by Night is a huge compliment puller, very versatile in cool weather, and one of, if not the best fragrances that Azaro has come out with in the past decade plus. Everything about this for me was an improvement over the original, and it still is my favorite in the entire Wanted line. To me, this this comes across like one of those fragrances that's going to be enjoyed by a lot of people while it's out, and it's gonna have that nice price that I talked about, but when it gets discounted and everything does run dry, and I'm not saying that's gonna be anytime soon, but this is that type of scent where you can find it for a good price, and then when the stock runs dry, the price goes swoosh. Now I've gotta go with an Armani, and I thought about putting one of the code flankers in here, but uh, I decided to go with this one. Aqua de Jo Profundo. Aqua de Jo, kind of an interesting line, because obviously the original, the best-selling men's fragrance of all time. Countless guys have worn that, including myself, just ad nauseum, like crazy, spraying on 
Aqua de Joe. But for a long time, there were no flankers. It was just Aqua de Joe. You wanted Aqua de Joe, you got Aqua de Joe. You know, there was no, Ooh, which one do I get? I don't know which one's best for what situation. You just bought Aqua de Joe. That's what you got. Then they started to slowly roll out some, you know, limited edition bottles and, and a flanker. And, you know, you had Ascenza, which is very nice and discontinued. You had Blue Edition, also discontinued, but for the most part, it was the original. If you wanted Aqua de Joe, you got Aqua de Joe. Although I will tell you guys, a lot of people will swear by this Blue Edition and say, hey, if you want something that smells how Aqua de Joe smelled when it first came out, then get this. Because there are a lot of people that say, oh, Aqua de Joe nowadays is not the same as in the past. So if you're one of those guys, see if you can track down a bottle of this one. And then suddenly, flankers hit. Boom, boom, boom. You started getting flankers every year of Aqua de Joe. And this one I fell in love with. I think it smells awesome. It takes me back to the glory days, the glory years of Aqua de Joe when everybody couldn't get enough of it. It was really actually kind of weird. <laughs> I worked at the mall. I've spoken about this a bunch of times, but I would spray on Aqua de Joe and it was like people were drawn to you like, like bugs to a light zapper. That's not a very good way to describe it. But it was about like that. So that love of Aqua de Joe is forever etched into my soul. Aqua de Joe Profundo comes out. It has that original DNA, giving a little twist, some minerality, uh, additional aquatics off the top, this green edge. I think it smells awesome. But as with any huge line of fragrances, when you come out with a new flanker, there are expectations and they're really high. So if a fragrance in a line starts to drop off, if it's not selling as much as the brand would like, then they're gonna be pretty quick with the snip. And if that should ever happen to Profundo, I'll scoop up some extra bottles for myself. If nothing else, I'll gift them years down the road. Then a cheapie that I love, Halloween Man X. This would be one of those where it's like, you gotta get in while the getting's good. You know, you gotta get it at that nice price, that sweet deal. If it starts going up to 60, 70, 80, 90 dollars, at those prices, it's no longer that solid cheapie that you're wanting. It just starts to be kind of expensive for what it is. Great coffee fragrance. You've also got notes in here of leather and whiskey. It's supposed to be a very masculine scent. They even gave it what they call a, a blackjack accord, which is those notes put together, the whiskey, the coffee, and the leather because nothing says manly like wearing a leather jacket and double fisting some coffee and straight hard liquor. I really do like this a lot though. It is surprisingly good. This is the fragrance that kind of resurrected Halloween Man as a line for me. It made me more excited for fragrances they might have coming out down the road. And this would be one of those ones absolutely that if the price started to creep and it seemed like they were going out of stock, I'd be getting one. Last but not least, going with Hugo Boss with the scent. Private Accord. The new The Scent Le Parfum, I, I enjoy that one. It smells nice, nice and sweet. Pure Accord, I thought was trash, hated it. And The Scent Absolute is good as well. One thing that I worry about with the, the scent line is that there's a, a decent amount of overlap on some of these releases. Not that they smell absolutely the same or anything like that, but you look at the presentations and they're pretty similar. You look at the note breakdowns, it's always focused on that Meninka fruit, which makes sense. That's what kind of sets this line apart, that dusty, fruity, exotic, sweet note that they pop in there. But a lot of these fragrances, maybe for some people, don't differentiate themselves enough. So it has me start to, to get worried thinking, Man, they're probably going to kill some of these off at some point. And I don't know which ones are going to get the axe, you know? Is it going to be Private Accord? Is it going to be Absolute? Is it going to be Le Parfum? What's it going to be? Is it going to be Intense? And this is not altogether fair because this was a limited edition, but they've already killed off what was one of the best fragrances in the whole line. This one, the Scent Parfum. This smells awesome as an iris note, which is very prominent, and the twist that it provides to the fragrance is great. And the iris is much more pronounced here in the Parfum edition than in the new Le Parfum. So yeah, you have the Parfum limited edition with iris, and then you have Le Parfum, which is the new one, not limited edition with iris, but this one 
has more iris than this one. A lot of similarities here in the names and the note breakdown, not so much when it comes to the actual smell. And this is one that I maybe should buy a backup bottle of. I'm not exactly sure if I should or not. I'm kind of waffling. Got it from a discounter, thought it smelled amazing, and then it went out of stock at discounters and then pretty much has never come back. But you can still find it on eBay. The scent Private Accord, laced with coffee, a note I very much enjoy, just like in Halloween Man X. If this one were to get discontinued, I would absolutely buy another one. And that's gonna wrap this video up. Five different fragrances, if they were announced that they were being discontinued or it seemed like they were being discontinued, I'd buy another one real quick. Let me know in the comments some of the fragrances that you would buy a backup bottle of with the quickness if they were going bye-bye. As always, thank you for hanging with me. Thank you for your support. Stay safe out there and we'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.